Buy this jet in today's video sponsor, War Thunder. But more on that later. How do you defend a country that's so big that it could cover half of Western Europe, yet most of the population lives right here, within spitting distance of the big baddie of the Cold War, the Soviet Union? The simple solution is by creating the ultimate fighter. This is the story of how the Swedes built a formidable opponent to any jet aircraft in the world, how they invented the Cobra maneuver, and how they laid the foundation for one of the strongest air forces in Europe just by thinking outside of the box. This is the Vikings Dragon, the Saab J-35 Draken. You've probably heard that Sweden recently joined NATO, and this is a big deal because of their policy of 200 years of military neutrality was just thrown away. After losing a bunch of territory, to be more precise, the whole of Finland to Russia back in 1809, and then later on some more land in the Napoleonic Wars, the Swedes had had enough of war. After centuries of battling and fighting, it was time to take a break and build in peace. So they decided that they wouldn't participate in any war in the future and instead just sit back and enjoy the meatballs and cinnamon rolls from Ikea while the rest of Europe did what they do best, fighting. That even included the war to end all wars and its sequel, World War II Electric Bigaloo, in which Sweden allowed the Germans to pass through their territory to invade Norway. That's how neutral they are. This is important for our story because after the formation of NATO in 1949, Sweden didn't want to be part of it. However, if you're not part of NATO, then no one is going to defend you if the Soviets just go crazy one day and decide to steamroll over Europe. So they needed to take things into their own hands and find a way to defend themselves, and nothing does that better than a fighter jet. The 1950s was dubbed the supersonic era. It was all about speed, shiny polished jets, and dangerous pilots with big forearms behind the controls. So the idea behind this new jet to defend Sweden was pretty darn straightforward. It needed to be fast, over Mach 1.5 to be precise, and it also had to be durable and pointy. It needs to be pointy. Because everybody liked pointy supersonic jets back in this era. Jokes aside, Sweden needed a interceptor more than a standard fighter. Due to the size of its territory and large unpopulated areas, one of the main requirements for this new jet was to be able to take off and land pretty much anywhere. And it also had to be simple enough to be maintained that could be done in the countryside and be so fast that it could intercept and destroy the main Armageddon delivery vehicle at the time, Soviet bombers. So they decided to start with something very cute, called the Little Draken. No, I'm not making this up, they created a small variant as a aerodynamics testbed to try out this new wing concept called a Delta Wing. But heads started to spin when this flying prototype of the small variant of this new jet unintentionally broke the sound barrier whilst testing just the afterburner. Damn, they knew they were cooking up something special. Thus, the full-scale prototype was green-lighted right away, and the Saab J-35 Draken was born. You have to imagine what it would have been like to fly such a powerful cutting-edge aircraft as a test pilot, especially since the pilots back then would have grown up with propeller aircraft, and now they had a hot new jet that could break the sound barrier. Wait, you don't have to imagine what it would be like to fly. With today's video sponsor, War Thunder, you can do just that. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and I mean seriously. It's available for free on PC and consoles, and I want you to come and play with me here on the channel. There's over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of over 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to fighter jets and main battle tanks that we use today. It's wild how many different machines you get to use. And they all come hyper-detailed with realistic damage, models, fuel, ammo, and much more. 
That includes today's machine, the F-35 Draken. It's in the game, and it's a powerful beast as ever. You can even use it to shoot me down the next time we play on a live stream. Oh wow, where did you come from? I didn't even, wow, well done. But it's also not just me, there's over 70 million players in epic PvV battles that go from simple missions and close quarters combat to epic aerial campaigns. If you're a fan of military history, then you're gonna love this game. And they're also constantly updating it with the latest update, so you can destroy, adding new planes to the French tech tree for more errors, new missile mechanics, and insane interior details. So come and play with me on anything for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link that is in the pinned comment or video description down below. Those that haven't played War Thunder yet or are returning after a break of at least six months will receive a massive bonus pack, including premium vehicles, 100,000 civil lions, and seven days of premium accounts. We were flying bombers after the disaster that happened with me with the bomber aircraft. The special magic of the Draken's speed was its delta wing. However, the delta wing design comes with a massive flaw, trouble at low speeds. And this wasn't a new problem. World War II fighters usually had trapezoidal or elliptical wings optimized for subsonic and slower speeds in general to help them take off and land. But the Nazis, with their Mi-262, brought the swept wing design into the fray with jet engines and supersonic speeds. But there was one big shortcoming. It wasn't very good at the slower speeds and the stall speed was much higher. This was then refined into the Delta Wing design with the Dassault Mirage 3, giving aircraft lower wing loadings, lower stall speeds, and better structural stability at the cost of aerodynamic stability, and a quick loss of speed, especially at a high angle of attack. The Russians attempted to get around these new problems with the MiG-21, with additional tailplanes to complement the Delta Wings and help with that maneuverability. So the Swedes saw the French and the Soviets try this new wing design and thought to think outside the box with a question. What if we made a Delta Wing aircraft that could fly well at slower speeds? The J-35 was the first aircraft to feature a double delta or cranked delta wing design. The first part of the wing was swept at 80 degrees to minimize drag and give better supersonic performance, or while integrating air intakes into the wing area, whilst the second part of the wing surface was only swept back at a 60 degree angle. Instead of ailerons and flaps, large inner and outer elevons were used to control roll and yaw. It's a pretty standard choice with tailless delta and flying wing aircraft today because of the lack of tailplanes, but at the time this was pretty cutting edge. Now this plane didn't have fly-by-wire controls or artificial intelligence or computers to help with the instabilities of delta wing flight. So its performance was pretty darn incredible for tech at the time. The engine chosen for the JM-35 was actually a license-built Rolls-Royce Avon, giving the aircraft somewhat of a low thrust to weight ratio of 0.7, but an impressive maximum speed of Mach 2.3. The first flight was performed in 1955, and while testing the second prototype, which was equipped with the afterburner, they finally broke the sound barrier and was able to test its supersonic performance of this promising design. But what was funny is that the pilot actually broke the sound barrier whilst just climbing to the altitude where that test was going to be performed. So they realized that they were sitting on top of a truly powerful beast. But what was also truly interesting was just how robust this jet was. Unlike most of the modern jets which required a lot of maintenance and a ground crew to operate, this was a prime example of a rugged Cold War era jet which needed minimum knowledge, maintenance, cost and crew to operate. Due to the Swedish defense policy at the time and their neutrality, they needed to be able to take on the Soviet Union by themselves if needed and intercept those Soviet bombers carrying the nukes. So that's why the J-35 was designed to take off and land at any highway or even a wider road in Sweden. Crews were trained to refuel and rearm these jets in the field, you know, at a petrol station, and many exercises were focused on exactly this scenario. 
Other than that, the pilots were pushing both themselves and the aircraft to the limits, simulating real air combat scenarios in every training flight. But the dark side of this story is the Swedish Air Force would eventually lose over 500 pilots during the Cold War in all kinds of accidents and incidences training in this brutal type of warfare. And considering they weren't even at war with the Soviets, this was a cost that was rather insurmountable. But it does lead us to one of the most interesting little facts about the J-35, that this is the jet that first performed the legendary Cobra maneuver. As we pointed out, the J-35 was an aerodynamically unstable plane in the era before fly-by-wire controls, making it very hard to handle in some scenarios. Namely, during high alpha maneuvers, where the large wing area would act as a giant air brake and bleed air speed, quickly leading to a stall. Basically, the last thing you want in a dogfight. So this is why the Swedish pilots started training on how to avoid super stalls and how to counter them. And the result was a maneuver called the court parade. After a high alpha maneuver, by adding significant power to the engine and pushing the control stick at the same time, a pilot would be able to get the airplane back into its initial position without gaining altitude and without entering a stall. In the late 1960s and 70s, when the Saab 37 Viggen entered service, Draken pilots found them very difficult to counter in a dogfight. So instead, they used their superstall countered maneuver as a last ditch effort to get the Viggen off their tail and then have them in sight when they passed by. The maneuver was called the court parade or short parry, a name taking from a fencing move. As the Viggen wasn't capable of such a maneuver, it allowed the Draken pilots to stay a very formidable opponent in the warfare exercises. And they even performed them with actual patrols and interceptions. One of the more interesting stories is when a Finnish pilot intercepted a British Nimrod patrol plane over the Baltic Sea. The British pilots knew that with such a wing design, the Draken could not keep up to them with flying at very low speeds. So they decided to fly slower and slower, thinking that the Draken pilot would have to gain speed to not enter a stall and then overtake them. The Draken pilot, of course, simply performed the Cobra maneuver and stayed right behind them. The RAF pilot was very surprised and simply congratulated the Finnish colleague on an open frequency. The Soviets had their own encounters with the Draken as well and sometimes sort of friendly duels would occur where pilots imitated a dogfight and the Soviets were stunned when the Draken performed its famous maneuver and got out of impossible situations. But it's also interesting that the next performance of this maneuver were the Syrians, when a pilot actually did it in a MiG-21. He was trying to save his MiG from stalling out after a high alpha maneuver and instead did a Cobra. He tried the maneuver again on his next flight in controlled conditions and shared his knowledge with not only his fellow pilots, but with its Egyptian colleagues as well. Israeli pilots wrote in their books about Egyptian MiGs standing on their tails during encounters during the 1967 Israel-Arab Wars, but we don't know for sure if they actually used them in combat. This eventually made its way back to the Soviets where they perfected the maneuver and performed it at the Paris Air Show in 1989. So what happened to the Draken as it entered the modern era? Draken went through several major upgrades with the last jet serving in the Swedish Air Force up to 1999. Versions A to J served in Sweden, among them a C twin-seater and E a recon variant. Many pilot deaths during the Cold War were directly connected with the lack of dedicated twin-seaters with the previous jets like the J-21 and J-29. Sweden wasn't the only country to operate the Draken. Denmark, Finland and Austria also operated J-35s and the Austrians were the last to retire them in 2005. The J-35 never had any real combat engagements, but the closest it actually got to an actual fight was during the Yugoslav Wars, where Yugoslav jets sometimes entered Austrian airspace and the Drakens flew patrols armed with AIM-9s to counter any possible threat. 
However, its operational history was very fruitful and it was loved by the pilots because it was a jet that you could really feel. And with a good pilot behind the controls with strong forearms, it was a potent weapon. I highly recommend that you check out Ari Serenin's interview about his own experience with flying the J-35 during his career in the Finnish Air Force. And I hope that you liked this video today and you can expect the continuation of this story of the other amazing Swedish jets like the Saab, Viggen and the Gripen. And of course, as always, I apologize with my pronunciation of some of these Swedish words because for my Australian tongue, they're really not that buttery smooth. But thanks for watching anyway. And this is it for the video, but before you go, make sure to check out today's sponsor, War Thunder, and come and play with me. You can play the game for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or video description. And of course, those that haven't played in at least six months or are brand new to the game, if you use my link, you'll get a massive bonus pack including premium vehicles, 100,000 civil lions, and seven days of a premium account. So be sure to come and play with me as we absolutely blow each other up in the air, land, and sea in War Thunder.